I want to be a little careful when I start talking about hacks because I want to make sure that I, you understand I'm not endorsing any of this behavior. But we can learn something by looking at how people have been hacked and how institutions have been hacked and get some sense for security best practices. So there's a hack that I like to talk about that's called the HB Gary hack. This is one of the better known ones in the security community. Um, one of the reasons, for, well, there's a couple reasons for that. First of all, Anonymous was involved and Anonymous you know, generates a lot of interest, I think, among people who are interested in the internet. And the second was the company HB Gary that was hacked was a government security contractor. So how did this go down? So there's a fantastic Ars Technica article that I would really encourage you to read. It's super interesting um, and just it was just a fantastically written article, and I'm basically just summarizing this. Um, the other thing that the HB Gary Cat hack sort of allows us to understand is how hackers can use one piece of information to get another piece of information to get another piece of information. So what happened? The first thing that happened was some of the uh, executives at HB Gary made a claim that they would be able to out or identify some of the leaders of the hacktivist group Anonymous. And Anonymous was not happy about this. So Anonymous decided to break into their site and try to embarrass them. And they did just that. In fact, they broke into their site. They defaced their website. Um, they released all of the entries from their password database to the world. And they distributed all of the company's uh, public and private emails going back to some period of time. So again, I'm certainly not condoning this type of behavior. But how did it happen? OK, so the first step was something called an SQL injection. Um, now, what is an SQL injection? Well, SQL is a popular database software that's used uh, by many websites online. And unfortunately, if your website is not well written, and the HB Gary site was not well written, SQL can be vulnerable to a type of attack where instead of entering a valid parameter, so frequently what happens is people will put, uh, you'll take the data from a form, a form submission, and you'll use that to generate an SQL query. Well, if you're not careful and someone is malicious, they can craft that form submission so that the SQL query that is generated exposes all sorts of information that you don't want to expose. So that was the first thing that they did. So they used an SQL injection attack, uh, attack, and this got them the password database. So that was the first step. They used SQL injection to get um, the password database for uh, the machine that they were trying to hack into. Now, happily, HB Gary wasn't totally stupid. They were using hashed passwords in their password database. But unfortunately, the way that they were using hashed passwords was not very good. And so the next step was to take these hashed passwords and recover plain text passwords, because they wanted to use those to log into the site. So the next thing they did was they used something called a rainbow table. And a rainbow table is really just a series of pre-computed hashes for passwords. So you can think about, if I have the hash, I really can't go backwards and get the password. But if I take a bunch of common passwords and pre-compute this huge table of all their hashes, all I have to do is look for matches in that table. And so that's the next thing they did. They used a rainbow table. Unfortunately, the founders of HB Gary had very bad, weak passwords. And so that's not good practice. You run a security company have a good password. So the next thing they used is they used a rainbow table to get clear text passwords. Um, okay, now what do you do? Okay, so now I can log into the website, but I'm not a super user. I'm not root, I don't have super user access. So the next thing they did is they found a vulnerability in the software that was running that allowed them to execute what's called a privilege escalation attack. So basically, they were able to get root access on this machine, right? So now software vulnerability gets me root. So now I'm root on this machine. Once they got to be root, they were able, because of the particular machine that they had broken into, they were able to um, gain access to the company's email accounts. And so now what they did is they took over one of the founder's emails, and now they used um, a social engineering attack. So the next thing they did is they used social engineering, uh, combined, so they had access to the founder's email, and they used a couple of pieces of information they were able to find in the email archives that they recovered to convince one of the other engineers at the company that they needed access to another machine. And there's an email exchange where they're like, it's this classic social engineering attack. Oh, I'm racing to give a presentation, and I really need you to change my password right now, blah, 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 blah. And it worked. 
So the social engineering attack gave them access to the web server. And that, that was a different machine. So the first machine they got access to, I guess, had the email on it and uh, a bunch of database backups and other things that they destroyed. And then they wanted access to the machine that had the website on it so that they could deface it. So the next thing they did was they got access to that machine using the social engineering attack and deface the website um, again and, and did all these sort of really terrible things to HB Gary as a company. But this is an example of how dedicated, motivated hackers will use small vulnerabilities, sort of one after another. So, you know, there wasn't like one huge, massive, gaping security hole in H.B. Gary's systems. Rather, there were a bunch of little holes that they should have fixed, they should have known better. But, you know, these were kind of little problems. But what Anonymous did is they took one, and they flipped it to the next, and they flipped it to the next, and they flipped it to the next, and they kept going until they had access to all the information that they wanted, and they hacked H.B. Gary. So again, I don't condone this behavior, don't try to do this to people, um, but it gives you a sense of some of the problems here. Keep your software up to date. Um, make sure that you're, you're, I mean, SQL injection attacks are really well known, and most modern front-end software for websites handles these attacks. The problem with HB Gary was they had this custom piece of software that some moron had written apparently, and it didn't handle this properly. So that's another problem. Uh, use strong passwords, and, you know, be careful about being subject to these social engineering attacks. There's some of the lessons from this hack.